in the upper left now in the blue newly signed to prep esports looking to tilt at his opponent once again his classic his opponent on the bottom right for the shopify rebellion looking better and better recently it's beyond Bjorn opening up double gas early here on Moondance, which, if you think about it, shouldn't be that surprising. Moondance is the shortest map in the pool. 31 seconds natural to natural, which the number doesn't really matter. It's just it's faster than anything else we have. And actually, it's two seconds faster than Waterfall, which is always the funny stat. This Waterfall is so, so small. But Bjorn has been doing this as of late. He did this in EPT Korea last week. No, EPT North America last week where he said yeah you know it's fine he actually played a pretty cool series against max packs uh just getting super aggressive going for these one and a half base all-ins and so for now it's going to be reaper it's going to be factory and then we're going to see that command center go down likely on the high ground because he can't really put it on the low ground at this point the scouting in depth that's eventually going to move out is going to deny it So for now, factory about halfway done. And then the question we ask ourselves is where exactly, what what brand of aggression does Bjorn look to go for? You can go you can go out of this a couple of different ways. You can drop an armory and go cloaked widow mines off of one base. Uh, you can go and do hellion drops, really quick hellion drops. But I mean, natural's on the way. So most, uh, he actually, you know, he can still go widow mines. And there we go. Widow mines are on the way, and we can still he can still go armory. Uh, it just it'll be a slightly greedier approach. So for now, the Reaper goes down. Found, looks like it got a little bit of something tangled with the Adept a little bit. What is Beyond Seen? Uh, that's, there we go. Uh, what is Beyond Seen? So he's seen the natural. He's gotten a scout on the gas in the main base, really from the SCV earlier. Not all that much. But it looks like it will just be Widow Mind Drops here to start things. Ah, you know, actually, no, the Armory can get started. It still has got a little bit of room where you can still drop the Armory and have it be effective for that first attempt. Reaper on the high ground is going to say, nope, nope, nope. Can't find much of anything there. So on the low ground, he will go once again. And it's funny, we look at this build and we say, okay, you know, Bion is going super aggressive and he is, but it's slightly delayed aggression, right? So <laughs> there's actually not a ton to talk about right now. We just, we look at players builds and we say, okay, how is this going to be? And Bion, he tries to hit the, the KDA charge to bump himself over something. Doesn't quite ha hit that angle, but I really enjoy what Classic is going for here. Bion is one of those players that it always feels so scary to go for Stargate play because half the time he's going to go for something that is just shut down by Stargate. Say, early one of my drafts. Maybe with an armory, although we don't have that in this game. And half the time, he goes for something that is very much, well, that counter Stargate play. He'll go three racks. He'll go a bunch of Cyclones off a one and a half base push. Things that the Phoenix really struggle against. But Classic has rolled the dice here. He has found the build that he wants to go for, and it works out very well for him because, in fairness, this is a single Widow Mind drop. Behind this, Bjorn is moving his tech forward. He will have a quick, rather quick stim, I think. Now, the Phoenix, they have been revealed, so Bjorn immediately... Well, doesn't even beeline home. He sets the... Uh, oh, okay, so he's, he's trying to bait this out. But the Phoenix don't know that his medevac is there. So they will not take that bait. Instead, they're going to go onto the other side of the map where there are a couple Marines. Cyclone now on the way. We're going to get Stim get started right around that five minute mark, which means 6.30ish is going to be the Stim timing for Bion in this game, which is a uh, not quite as fast. We saw Bion set the war, excuse me, Ryung set the world on fire with his six minute Stim timings back in Katowice. And of course, that's fallen out of the meta just a little bit. There's a couple SCVs. They're going to fall down. But beyond now, he's got an opportunity and he gets 10 workers. Okay. Yeah, five SCVs go down. That's kind of the, the expected price for a couple uh, for a couple Hellions. 10 probes, though, for a Widow Mind drop when your opponent has opened Phoenix. That is absolutely not. And the Raven is going to show up on the other side as well. Ideally, you kind of want this Raven because it's going to keep the Colossus down. And this will be Colossus behind this. We can see that from, well, there being a Robo Bay there. 
but still getting a couple more workers getting the scout off that there's a robo bait still useful what mine's burrow and once again classic's not handling this seven more workers go down and oh it's just going from bad to worse yes the medevac is dead yes this raven will not survive the phoenix will clean this up eventually but 17 probes have died it doesn't really matter So now classic he needs to find some way to get damage onto the other side of the map the phoenix they dive in once again and beyond has been a little greedy as he said i don't need any sort of missile turrets i will be able to hold with my units on the ground and one phoenix gets very low missile turret now arrives but still the phoenix they're on the edge of things missile turret place to defend hellions as they dive in but once they're already there missile turret really not doing all that much but still a phoenix will die and we have to remember this is not classic cannot lose anything right now Yo, his charge there's no charge i don't even think there's a twilight no there's not he's got colossus on the way but they're not here just yet beyond stemming up knocking down the double pylon this is going to barely not supply block classic but it's going to get close but here come the colossus here come the phoenix gun drops the picks up on the high ground trying to find uh, some semblance of value as his army has to run away he's going to get on top of stalker that's nice again there's no blinks these stalkers are going to go dead beyond into the mineral line continuing the carnage continuing to knock probes down as we will get probably one more yeah that's gonna be about the extent of it but still the economy of beyond or uh, rowing for the economy of classic continues to be sorely tested even if he what does have that nexus just a little bit faster it looks like classic saying you know what beyond you may have overcommitted there i just killed a tank i killed a medevac i killed a bunch of bio i think i can i think i can punish your classic he's gonna find the medevac and that's going to be a significant component of Bion's army supply. He doesn't even get all the Marines out. He gets three of them, but, well, the rest of them, they're dead. Well, I guess he gets four of them out. But the rest of them are dead in the sky. And now, Classic here sitting up about 15 army supply. But he's going into... He's going into double Stargate. Looks like he's going to go into carrier play behind this. This is very much a setup in on these three bases that you can turtle on that can work out pretty well for Classic, but that tells us that as good as his supplies right now as good as his tech is right now double colossus really nothing to shoot these down he doesn't have to kill here in fact i don't think he's going to necessarily try he's just gonna sit here on the edge maybe knock oh good force field's gonna knock them he's going to knock the bunker down marauders fighting what they can they get picked up they get saved they got to run away the medevac runs forward it is doomed no not quite phoenix dive in a second time but the repair is good for just long enough but still not a lot of medevacs which means as the medevacs fall you need to build more medevacs it means you cannot build vikings so Bjorn now pinned back here classic with the one two bunch yeah he took so much damage in the early game but that follow-up push from beyond was just not well reasoned has not worked out for him and his production's not there just yet so the phoenix providing value providing vision with these colossus here in the skies and beyond's eventually gonna have to make that decision how many feet how many centuries looks like there's only one so at least there's that gun scans out says there is there war prism is there army behind this the answer is no he's getting to a point pretty soon where he may be able to make something happen as uh, six scvs eight scvs have fallen right now so classic moving forward in that economic lead and as the vikings arrive classic backs up he says you know i don't need to take this fight but we will see the observer go down and behind this classic's fourth base just about done carriers already two on the map four hitting the field plus one air attack just about done shields on the way this setup from Byun from I mean he killed what was it 20 probes looking so good and then classic he is able to find that counter punch when Byun overcommitted into the Colossus play into Phoenix Colossus thinking he, he had done enough to get more now puts classic incredibly far ahead and Byun by the way does not know that this is carrier play not at all I mean this this is such these are such quick carriers i we're, we're talking in in terms of pvt timings getting to four carriers right around 10 minutes is stupid like stupid good it is incredibly quick here for classic and beyond is going to struggle to build an army that will be able to defend it on three bases he has to get this fourth at the very least and then he has to find some way to get active on the map because beyond has won these games in fact when I talked about Classic versus Byun uh, in 128, I think, in 132, 
they were games that looked in part like this. Byun pin back, taking bad trades, fighting against Skytoss, and making it happen regardless because he just had the map control. He had the map, he had the ability to rip Classic open in the late game or just take one miraculous fight. But this game feels even worse than those. And Pyun needs some way to get on the map. He needs some way to find some value. He cannot just kind of sit here and let the Protoss player be one to two bases ahead of him, building Sky Toss. If it would be one thing if it was, oh, that's a great scan. It's going to see that there is, uh, well, it's going to see the Fleet Peak. It's going to see the Carrier Pop, too. So Pyun, now he knows he can be a little bit more active on the map. The army from Classic, incredibly scary, especially, on, well, actually on offense, too, but not super mobile. So Bion knows the Classic was probably turtling up here, but now as Classic has been scouted out, well, here comes the army. The fourth base is about halfway up, so no planetary here. And we need to see a whole panoply of missile turrets from Bion. He needs extra, he just needs ways to fight some of these interceptors. And the scan from Bion in the middle of the map, he's not gonna see anything. He doesn't know that Classic's here just yet. This is six carriers. This is a lot of damage, but now Bion, he has the Vikings clumped up here. Bio steps forward. Missile turrets, they're doing what they can here. Disruptor shots. Oh, they're going to get some big shots indeed. The army of Bion falling apart a little bit, but how many interceptors remain? The answer is 12, 11. Not really a lot. And now the Bio can step forward here. Now they can start to get on top of the army, but still, the Colossus are here. Still, they remain a problem, but the... Oh, the Stalkers, not incredible. The army of Bion stands strong briefly, but it is a 50 army supply lead. A 60 army supply lead for Classic in this game. And as he warps in Zealots, he, he looks like he's not going to go for it just yet. He wants those interceptors. He wants the carriers to be able to add power to this army. So it buys beyond time. He says, okay, more missile turrets on the way. The missile turrets, of course, not only do they go and... Oh, okay. He's just going to kill... <laughs> uh, I guess there was just one Zealot. He needed, needed a little more supply. But these missile turrets, not only do they knock down interceptors, not only do they provide value in that way, they also go and they provide something for the Zealots to charge onto that are not, you know, the army. So they really remove a lot of the power of the charge loss. It, it means Beyond only has to fight the tech for the most part, which is a powerful idea. As we do see Vikings continuously repaired here, but Beyond still down about 30 army supplies. Production is really never caught up with the game state. Now the Vikings, they're going to run forward, take pot shots, knock one carrier down. That's a nice start. Six supply down the drain. EMP is blinking this army. Disruptor shots. Not going to get what they just want just yet. Another carrier falls, but still more carriers join the fray, but Bion stimming forward. He's going to get a third carrier here. Really no stopping that one. And now as he runs forward, he's got to be careful. The Colossus, the backbone of this army, make it so hard for Bion to stim in. But he takes a much better fight. Do we have this? No, yes, we do. He takes a much better fight. Three carriers, four stalkers, a couple zealots for a couple marines and a couple vikings. Yeah, no, absolutely not. That, oh, there we go. A better fight for Bion. And we're starting to see how almost fruitless it feels to fight into a turtled Terran like this. So, plus goes to the next stage of things. It says, well, you know, if two carriers at a time are not enough, I can go five. I'm just going to really max out on that air idea as now Classic finds a War Prism in the base, but he's actually maxed out. So these Zealots, I, and he actually kind of wants to get rid of him. He wants more carriers, but it does mean he will not be able to punish beyond super hard, right? The no warp in of... There's only on eight, eight gateways, actually. No warp in of eight Zealots to crunch through a mineral line. So let's take a moment and uh, take a look at where the army is right now. Three, uh, three Colossus, ten carriers, two disruptors. And honestly, I feel like I feel like we're starting to get to the point where the carrier numbers are just a little bit too high. And so does the classic, because Tempests are on the way behind this. But as, as we see these uh, these armies become more monolithic, and see here, classic just targeting down his stock. He said, "I don't even want stalkers." Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't think he meant to target the Colossus. Colossus is still something that finds value. But these, as these armies become more monolithic, we do enter this setup where Bion's army that is more complex. It is a bunch of Vikings, 14 Vikings, 21 Marines, Ghosts, a nuke, because why not? We start to hit this point where Bion's army is so much more... Okay, you can't get in. There's a there's a cannon right there. I thought about it, though. Uh, where Bion has so much more ability to be on the map. 
or at least uh, ability to maneuver the map a little bit as this ghost runs in looking for a nuke on the base and he's looking for that angle is he gonna find the yeah he got the angle and this is the time he actually gun looks to move forward when his opponent's distracted but doesn't really get all that much i think a goose went down as marines are gonna find the push on the right side vikings run forward but that is not what you wanted there beyond the tempest they can take pot shots but 19 probes go down sorry we should have been looking at the nuke so much happening all at once here Byun now now we have the ghost running in 008 not 007 he's a little bit better than that and he finds his way in I mean it's just very low and we don't have another nuke so the ghost is just gonna get I mean it goes two shot probes <laughs> it's gonna continue to find more value and I thought we I thought classic was taking base here he's only adding on shield batteries he's only pushing forward with static defense and I say only this is a scary position now but beyond finally he has at least three three on the ground I want to see more air I want to see more mech upgrades I want to see double armory actually I don't know that beyond can afford it though as a ghost runs forwards looks at the EMP does not get it bio moves backward marauder and a marine falls not much but still a little bits of poke a little bits of chip and as we're starting to hit these heavy tempest upgrades the missile turret walls that have been keeping me unsafe for the last several minutes not all that great <laughs> there we go there's a there's a dead I I that was weird from the shots, but anyway, now Beyond move forward. Big EMPs there on top of the army on the dead airspace. Not a lot of splash. These Vikings are getting so much value, and they will get another and another and another here. Beyond finding so... My God, he's just sitting there in the dead airspace where nothing can really join, and he kites backwards. The Tempest can... The Tempest fall. Well, the Tempest are doing what they can. Excuse me, but the carriers, they continue to die. Classic. He killed a decent amount of stuff, but he just lost 10 carriers. That is not something he can replace cheaply or quickly, but beyond his bio army on the ground, can't move far, too far forward. The disruptors are still powerful indeed. There's just not a lot of anti-air here. There's, there's one carrier. The Tempests really tell the story and with seven Tempests. The two extra ones, they don't really do all that much. Nuke going down on the north side. Classic is just, Beyond is out trading him in this. Beyond was down about 2,000 resources. Nuke goes down, gets three workers in a pylon. Beyond was down about 2,000 resources and now He's up about 4,000. And Byun is just so good in this late game state and Classic is so good at getting there. And it feels like we get these games then where it, Classic, Classic all, uh, so often feels in these late games. It's not, this is not quite fair, but as the ghost, it's not the nuke that kills all the probes. It's the ghost that runs in. Uh, it often feels like he, you know, he's the dog that caught the car. He's like, I got there. Okay, what do I do now? And then he realizes he can't kill Byun. But beyond this, a bit awkward position for him to fight. The carriers will go down. Beyond steps on top of the disruptors, gets one, gets two, and he gets them all. So now, but he can't run forward because there's still lots of carriers on the field. 28 interceptors remain. Beyond has to retreat backwards to his static defense. He loses another medevac. He loses that healing. Here comes Plasma once even beyond Steven's 40. So, oh, well, there we go. There's another disruptor moving in. And the concave from every side. EMPs hitting everything but the Tempest in the skies. Do they have what they need to do? Seven interceptors. Count them. It's now zero beyond Simi forward. All the bio so damn low, but there's nothing that does any damage to the ground anymore. The Tempest, they're falling. The carriers, they're falling. Classic, he falls. Beyond takes game one. In the bottom left now in the blue down one he got to the end game but was not able to close it out for prep classic and of course never right now in the red of one game to zero just the king of the late game for shopify it's beyond Beyond, a little bit more middle of the road opening in game two because it's data C. You don't have an insanely short map. Data C, in fact, our largest map in the pool. Actually, the, in fairness, the natural to natural rush distance is not that long. But it's not super short either. So this is a map where uh, sort of double gas openers, uh, barracks factory into that command center, those type of aggression, it doesn't really work out. Or, I mean, it can, of course, but it's not as... Uh, the map is not its favorite to horses. So we're going to see Beyond do something a little bit more middle of the road. And also, I think he has proven to himself once again that he can, regardless of how behind he is, he can take the late game against Classic. That is just his domain, and Classic should be afraid to go there. So with that being the case, 
you know, with Classic having not, well, okay, so early game was horrible for Classic. He lost 20 pros to one of my drops. And then he goes, he beyond over commits and Classic says, okay, well, I'm just going to slow my upgrades a little bit. I'm going to build a lot more stuff and I'm going to be able to, I'm going to siege you up. And Classic, instead of saying, okay, well, that, that's my opportunity to maybe break a base. And in fairness, Moondance, it's very hard to break that natural. He says, I'm going to go into Skytoss. And in, in fair, he had already started the second star. He already started the Fleet Beacon. But I feel like if he just warped in a bunch of Zealous there, he might have been able to break Byun. Byun's army was very low. And Byun really, I think he had like one tank piece. He lost the other one on the other side. It was not a really good position for Classic. Or it was not a good position for Byun. We move into game two with similar ideas from Classic Stargate opener once again. Byun, well, it's a 1-1-1. One, one, one. I would say, you know, oh, you know, what are my drops maybe? But Byun has been showing the, us this this tendency for these weird, like, Marine Widow Mine or Marine Hellion drops that have been finding some value. But... We're going to have to see. I, I very much expect to see the, the swap kind of immediately there, but now it's probably going to be for a cyclone. So Phoenix are on the way. Any sort of aggression from beyond is going to be maybe a little bit more measured. It's, well, as I say that, sorry, it's going to be about seven Marines. Seven, eight Marines and the medevac. Maybe you add the cyclone with it, have it run across the map because cyclones are very, very quick indeed. And this is surprisingly, the, this, this scant eight Marines, these scant seven Marines are very, very good against the opening that Classic has gone for because he doesn't have anything on the ground right now. Classic's army consists of three depths and a phoenix because again he's he's building himself into uh, that better he's building himself into that map dominant position that's he's gonna happen about a minute from now. The Marine's now gonna drop on top of the adept. There's no shade out, so this Mar this adept is probably no, it is dead. But at least it's the scout. Classic now says, okay, I can move over to the high ground. It's gonna try to deal with the with the gateway, but at least warp gate is done. So there is that. With three Phoenix here. Maybe they can make something happen. Adepts are going to arrive as well, but there's a Cyclone as well. Beyond just rallying more across the map. This is getting very awkward for Classic right now. He doesn't want to lose this gateway. He especially doesn't want to lose the Cybercore, but both are in threat. And if this gateway goes down, folks, that is the only <laughs> that is the only gateway on the map. Classic is going to have to hold with Phoenix Immortal, which is not the worst idea ever, but it's not the best one. I mean, you want to be able to warp things in. That's the point of getting Warp Gate. Bio can use a run forward, and there is at least a shield battery, and overcharge can get popped. It's just a two-base all-in from Beyond. He's adding more gateways, no, or adding more barracks. No more, no third base on the way just yet. Oh, Beyond could have at least done damage there to the uh, Medivac, but now he runs forward. Medivac taking a little bit more damage, but there's a second Cyclone, and that represents so much damage now to the Phoenix, to the, to the Immortals. And only now is Classic building more gateways. The, the Phoenix, or excuse me, the Cyclones, they run forward. Uh, this this Immortal needs some help. But now the Phoenix, they're going to try to dive in. Viking getting targeted first. One Phoenix falls. The Viking does not fall here. Beyond moves in. It's all on the ground. It's all dead. Shield battery overcharge getting popped now. So Beyond backs up just a little bit. One Medivac falls. Second Medivac falls. So no healing on this army anymore. But this production that you want, it's not really there. And the rally continues couple marines they need to be brought into this army but there's, there's no healing anymore there's nothing to keep this army alive an immortal pops out but while well, the marines they targeted down post haste it, it's dead very quickly indeed but the cyclones are now dead which sounds like uh, eventually this is going to be a hold for classic but he's lost five probes he lost six probes he killed a couple of mortals or he lost a couple of mortals he only just now is getting that first gateway on the way he's got his third base on the way he said i got enough damage this is fantastic Now the Phoenix run on the other side. They're looking for something. They're going to delay the fourth and fifth barracks, which is nice. Or at least the fourth barracks. Uh, Classic doesn't stick on the fifth. Looks like he got something else as well. Uh, okay, got a couple of Marines. And Marines, they're going to find another Phoenix here. Classic just not quite on top of his Phoenix micro in this game. We, we, he did... Decent work with the Phoenix in the last one to bring himself back into it a little bit, but 
Losing a couple Phoenix here is just really bad it, when he is as far behind as he is. Now, delaying the command center is nice. Oh, uh, medivacs? Oh, actually, these medivacs are roughly undefended. He will not, he could have delayed the command center again, but instead tried to dive on top of the healing. And, you know, he's found some consistent value. He's brought the worker count back to somewhat equivalent. How many Colossus do we have on the field? We have one. Second one on the way, extended thermal lance. And remember, this is how Bjorn threw himself into a deficit in that previous game. This is how, oh, he's going to find the medevax in the sky. That's fantastic. He's going to force the drop away. Although this might even be good for Bjorn. Because again, remember, we saw Bjorn do something similar in that previous game. Now, no tanks in this push. It's just a lot of bio with plus one stim combat shields, all those fun things. Although no concussive shells. Ooh, this is why this is why this can get a little spicy here. You don't really run from this army, not really, but the Phoenix continue to fall. But Classic on the map, he says, I think I can make something happen here. It's only one Colossus, the Widowmine's got a burrow, got a run here. Stock's starting to fall. Classic has overstepped himself. A dead or a dead immortal, dead Colossus eventually. I don't think there's gonna be much well, maybe. Widowmine's gonna burrow on top of that's a dead Colossus, and now the Phoenix are doing what they can. There's really not a lot of anti-air anymore, but so much of the tech. So much of the tech of Classic has been reset once again. So classic yes he does have three bases yes he's on 62 workers but he's down about a thousand minerals in the air in this in this game state a thousand or a thousand resources is a lot more importantly he is one colossus three stalkers and three phoenix he needs a lot more i understand the desire to not take a fight at your base because then things get complicated maybe but he just pushed a little bit too further uh, too far out lost too many phoenix lost too many colossus we have to see what he can make do from this charge now on the way. Skipping Blink in its entirety. Technically, Phoenix, they fill that role of the Blink Stalker. But even more importantly than that, he just needs... He, he, he cannot take the pit stop for Blink. Not in this game. He needs charge to get on top of this army to just serve as that living force field to allow the Colossus to fight. But even then, I don't know that that is going to be enough. I feel like rapidly approaching the state where even building more colossus is almost a mistake where classic needs to move just into pure disruptor places i i need i need some really good shots uh, i need i need a, a portion of beyond's army to instantaneously die for me to have a shot at the fight because the army supply well it's only it's only 10 off right that 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 doesn't tell the full story beyond has ghosts on done plus one is not even plus one is two thirds of the way down here for classic three quarters of the way but oh he's gonna find another medevac on the dead airspace but no not quite and I do appreciate here how Classic is, uh, well, that's the downside of not having Blink. Uh, I do appreciate that Classic has been continuously building the Phoenix once again, over and over, getting himself back up to that magic number of five, because he, do he knows he doesn't have Blink, so he needs some sort of drop defense. He, kn he knows he needs some sort of anti-air. And unfortunately, that drop defense, that anti-air is not where it needs to be. There's no uh, no uh, observer on the right side, so we're going to see a quadruple drop into the main base here, but we have Classic pretty quick on the recall, so we should be... It should just go away. EMP is blanket this army, so it's going to enable some sort of escape, but still good lifts on the Marauders. They're dead. Phoenix, do they get any of the med uh, the medevacs? They do not. But only two workers go down, so really not the biggest of deals. Problem is, you know, these, uh, the wind mines are going to cause some some problems if uh, Classic is not aware of them, and it does not look like he is. Two one now on the way from classic is he's starting to get caught up on upgrades a little bit he's down one but you know you drop chronos on double forge and you'll be you'll be at back there pretty soon one would of mine comes off cooldown the other one this is the one that's going to get a little bit of damage but if beyond is really on top of things there's actually yeah okay the wind mine just went off but we have a where's the observer there's only one observer there's only one observer on the map and that really just tells us a lot about how uh, classic has had to play He's had to, he's just had to spend all of his robo time on Colossus Disruptor. He can't build anything that he cannot build a War Prism, can't build an Observer. This fourth base now under fire, but Classic does rotate over. This is a scary army. He's going to lose the base, but I think Gun loses this army. One medevac goes down. Second medevac will fall here as well. And yeah, it's a couple couple units get out really not all that much of a drop now into third base beyond looking to turn himself into pole here the nexus sniper but the army of classic is there it is ready big shot goes off back in the main base they go warping of zealots classic doesn't really have them well actually i don't think he's the warpins to do more just yet but the phoenix arrive once again emps on this army which means they cannot dive on top they lose all their shields emps on the the pile or excuse me the cannon as well 
Well, the army of, uh, of plastic returns once again. The Phoenix now just in the air. They say, oh, we're going to get a medevac maybe, but they don't. Not quite. Eight probes die. This quad drop on the right side, uh, in the, well, on the north side, just causing so much consternation, so much problems for Classic. Look how, look how careful Classic's being with this Phoenix Or with this Phoenix uh, clump. He's not, actually, he stopped building them now, which is, is very valid. I mean, when CMPs come out, the Phoenix are just not nearly as useful, but he's just keeping them on the edge. He's, he's representing this threat to be on this. So, you know, you gotta run here, but if you do, you're gonna lose all your medevacs. But now, of course, that threat is done. This army from Classic, though, all of a sudden, he's about to hit a 2-1 timing. His army is very powerful indeed. The planetary is there, though, so Classic cannot push through this location. Maybe, though. With these Archons, Classic wants to go for something, but Ghost's already out, so they're going to pop, like, I don't know, a whole bunch of balloons, maybe disruptor shots. That's what Classic's looking for. If he can get some really good disruptors, he can crack this position open, but I don't think he's going to be able to do that from that, but he still feels so much pressure. His fourth base only just now getting restarted. He says, I need to get something done here. But he doesn't even have blink. He can't get on top of these Liberators. He's just got to run in. Disruptor shot. It's going to get targeted right down. But here goes the Liberator. It's dead. Classic low. He's just on the edge of things. He, he can't really take this fight as much as he wants to. He's trying. He's, he's striving. But most he's going to get? Sensor Tower. You know, the, these Archons, Classic's building them too late. His supply continues to fall and fall and fall and fall. And beyond his, his economy is better. His tech is better marginally but it is better his army supply is better classic just needs a way to, to attack in maybe on the right side it's so hard to attack in the four the four bases here on data see disruptor on the north side gets a ghost that's nice beyond looking for that surround but that can always be a little tricky as the flank or the really the rallying disruptor we can't even call it a flanky one arrives beyond looking for a little more eight stalkers warp in but again no bullet classic hasn't even started i i I don't know whether he thinks that this is on. It's getting researched, but at this point, it's something that he really does need. Beyond easy. He's got a big warp in on the right or a big run by on the right side, but the left side, excuse me. Army on the right side here is going to trap Classic right in the middle of the map. Beyond the world is his oyster. He's hacked the bases, he attacked the army. I'm not really sure. Looks like, okay. Yeah, well, what are we talking about? It's Beyond. He's going to drop in the main base once again. There can be a recall here, though. That is ready. The classic, he just, he says, I got to defend things. I, I can't recall right now. So the Nexus is just going to get sniped. Probes have been pulled away. Classic already moving a large portion of his army onto the right side, fourth base, but not quickly enough because the drop on the left side, it's all on three positions at once. And Beyond gets everything that he could possibly want. Five probes go down. I think he gets this Nexus too. Yeah, he, he, I mean... Oh, he doesn't. He tried to go for probes, and now that means the Nexus survives. I was, I said Beyond got everything he wanted, but apparently he was, um, he was a rather frugal Christmas shopper, shopper, and he did really did not want all that much. And we're gonna see a lot of these Vikings go down on move command here. Now, if only there was blink, a lot more of them would fall. Now that's a dead Colossus at the very least. So, I mean, miscontrol on both sides. The classic is able to keep his import. I guess he does want to keep the Nexus in the main base at the very least from like space control perspective but he is able to make at least he keeps his three mining bases up this drop in the main base once again but there's zealous stalkers here really not going to be that big of a deal vikings continue to fall classic up on army supply now but no warp prism and again no blink on these stalkers he cannot break the liberators easily the zealous run forward but i mean what are you going to do there's there's a wall there so what we really need to see classic do is, is take this opportunity uh disruptor shots though they're going to move forward he's got to run back and liberators they're just so good against the disruptors they outrange them, or they share range with them. Yeah, I mean, they share range with them until you have Liberator range. I don't think Beyond has that just yet. Uh, so, you, you know, you just, the shots don't go off in time, but Big just, he's trying to burst the planetary down. He doesn't get it. Meanwhile, that one Marine that dropped from earlier finds seven probes. And this game is going absolutely nuts. Classic trading worse. His economy has been worse the entire game, but finally his blink is done. Finally, he at least he has some way, some idea that he can deal with these Liberators. There's just so many folks. We're at seven Liberators on the map right now. Any spot that Classic wants to attack into is, is pretty much pointless. So again, we need, we need to see Classic go. We need to see him get another base. We need to see him get upgrades. But I don't think he feels like he can do that. He's going to run in. Oh, he's just placed atop the planetary. Classic, this may have been a mistake, but he does get it. But here comes the army of Beyond on the bottom side. One disruptor, all that remains. Classic tried to burst it down, but actually going to take a fight on the right side. He says, this may actually work out for me. I look at the army supply, and that tells a very different story because 
it's like the supply is not good for classic but he's winning this fight everywhere it seems like it's good for him anyways i guess a lot in production the base goes down for beyond he loses a lot of his army it really is all down to these liberators but you can't bling on top of this one widow mines go off classic is moving forward disruptor shot zoning back and again the liberators fall but now beyond he's up about 20 army supply classic has to run he lost so many disruptors in that engagement but instead he's gonna take the fight this is 3-2 versus 2-1 by the way and the upgrades from classic are woefully far down but he's trying to make something happen anyways and there was that other there was that other base that other uh command center that beyond was making so he's gonna stim in here these, these are dead disruptors there's no saving them they're not gonna get their shots off and now the army of classic continues to fall i thought he it looked good for a second it looked like he maybe had a shot but you don't fight two one stalkers versus three two stim bio it does not happen beyond he weathers two storms but no stormers researched in this game or in this series but he weathers a storm of another sort and he moves on to the round of four